I would like to explain the fundamental difference between the two most prevailing political parties, the Democrats and the Republicans, also referred to as the Liberals and the Conservatives, because believe it or not, most people actually don't know the difference. If you were to approach most people on the street and ask them why they are a Republican or why they are a Democrat, their best answers would likely be quite vague and broad. If you ask them why they were voting for a particular Republican or Democratic candidate, they would likely mention things like I think he or she is a good speaker or trustworthy. They may even be able to regurgitate a few party catchphrases, sound bites, or slogans, but they will usually not provide any specific reasons in terms of the issues or party ideology, simply because they don't know them. Studies have shown that most people vote the way they do, primarily because it's how a family member or friend of theirs is voting. Studies have also shown that people often cast their vote towards a candidate who they think is going to win, regardless of their political philosophy. Here is the core difference between Democrats and Republicans, which is actually quite easy to remember. Republicans crave more economic freedom, but fight for social and moral regulation, whereas Democrats desire more social freedom, yet fight for economic regulation. You can see that these two parties, or rather political forces, have a yin-yang type relationship. This two-party system, regardless of what each may actually be called, is always inevitable to form within any democratic political system and can never be truly lost. These two parties help to provide many of the checks and balances our government needs. One of the biggest debates between the two parties is how big should the central government be? How strong of a role should government have in our lives? This question has been struggled with as far back as the Founding Fathers and well beyond. The problem is, both parties are in part correct and both are in part incorrect. We need more government in certain areas and less government in other areas. It's a delicate balancing act. I should also point out that being a Democrat or a Republican is not as black and white as many may think. There is a whole spectrum of variations between the two. A gradation that extends from one extreme to the other, from the far left pole to the far right. For example, far right-wing Republicans believe in an extremely free market society, but moderate Republicans do not. Far left-wing Democrats believe in a very free, socially expressive society, but moderate Democrats do not. Most rational thinking people fall somewhere in between, believing some economic and social restrictions are necessary, and that some social and economic freedoms should be allowed. Some of you may be familiar with the Nolan chart, which diagrams and illustrates the two main scales of freedom to control, one being the economic scale and the second being the social or moral scale. When combined, you get a chart with four main quadrants, usually viewed in a diamond configuration. The left quadrant indicates liberal or democratic views. The right indicates conservative or republican views. If you believe in a lot of freedom in all areas, whether economic or social, you are a libertarian, indicated in the upper quadrant. Thankfully, pure libertarians are becoming extinct because we've all basically learned that we humans need some rules and restrictions to actually better our lives. If you believe in a lot of government control in all areas, whether economic or social, you are a statist or an authoritarian like Hitler or Stalin, indicated down below. Everyone, based on their beliefs, falls somewhere on this chart. This may be upsetting to those of you who hate to be labeled, but try not to let it get to you because it's simply meant to show where you may stand on the issues. I am personally somewhere in between, making me a moderate or a centrist, but I do lean much more strongly towards the democratic philosophy, and I do believe in some government regulation, as long as it's in the right areas and as long as it's not overdone. Since Republicans prefer more economic freedom, then it goes without saying they also support capitalism and the free market system. Democrats, on the other hand, tend to support socialism or at least socialized services and programs like public schools, public fire departments, public libraries, public broadcasting, and social security and Medicare. Unfortunately, most Republicans seem to think that capitalism, competition, and free markets solve all problems and have an every-man-for-himself type philosophy, whereas Democrats tend to think government spending solves all problems, but thankfully hold an all-for-one and one-for-all type philosophy. Republicans celebrate financial independence, self-reliance, and individuality, 
whereas Democrats more often celebrate interdependence, cooperation, and community. Republicans also frown on the idea of the government raising taxes on big businesses and on high-income citizens, while providing a tax relief for small businesses and lower-income citizens, especially when a percentage of that revenue goes towards helping the sick, the needy, and the poor. Republicans call this redistributing the wealth and view it as a great injustice. Apparently, most Republicans feel that every dollar is truly and justly earned, as well as every empty pocket. They also claim that taxing the rich to give to the poor slows down the economy by causing large business owners, who they believe are the main job creators, to stop hiring and eventually to start downsizing and laying off workers. But history has repeatedly demonstrated time and time again that government spending towards the middle class and the poor helps everyone, including the rich, by strengthening our economy. Most respected, well-educated economists will correctly tell you that this type of government taxing and spending is the best way to boost the economy during a recession, and historical statistics confirms it. I think it is good that the Republican Party helps to prevent the government from overtaxing and overspending, but there are times when the distribution of wealth becomes suspiciously offset, indicating economic injustice or corruption, and it becomes necessary and justified to redistribute the wealth. Let's face it, the upper class does stand on the backs of the middle class, who ironically work the hardest, yet get paid the least. And believe me, the wealthy class have found many sneaky, covert, and in many cases unethical ways to unjustly redistribute the wealth of America. Too often the dice are loaded, and the tables are rigged. So since the relatively free market system is not perfect, and never will be, we the people must use government to help justly redistribute the wealth. Keep in mind, if the foundation of the middle class falls, so will the upper class, and they will have the longest fall to endure. Republicans usually advocate trickle-down economics, believing the better off the wealthy class is, the better off everyone else will be, since they believe the wealthy are the main spenders and job creators. The idea is that wealth will trickle down to the lower classes. But that philosophy has already proven many times in the past not to work. Wealth almost never trickles down, and instead almost always trickles up. Large corporations and wealthy CEOs have been shown historically to sit on their money out of fear and or greed, especially during a recession, and kink the circulation of money, which harms our economy. Statistics have shown that small business owners collectively invest more than large business owners because they do not have the luxury not to. They also usually keep a more responsible, watchful eye on their business in order for it to survive and thrive and they are known for taking better personal care of their customers. The large business owners don't have the same incentives or desperation to do so. Also, large businesses eventually reach a maximum threshold and can't grow, and so they end up seeking cheaper labor and sending American jobs overseas in order to remain competitive. It turns out that the better off the middle class is, the better off everyone else is, at least up until the point of reducing the excessive power, control, and wealth of the super-rich. So if the government raises taxes on the wealthy class and on large business owners, while at the same time providing a tax relief for the middle class and small business owners, then the middle class, which is the main backbone of our economy, will be in a position to spend more, expand their own businesses, and hire the workers that the big corporations can no longer afford to hire. Overall, the economy will prosper and be better off. There also seems to be a cultural dichotomy when evaluating these two main political parties. Republicans tend to share a common personality profile with each other, and so do Democrats. For instance, Republicans are usually Christian, whereas Democrats, if not Christian, often study Buddhism or some form of New Age spirituality. The irony here is that the Democratic way should actually appeal to all Christians, because that party believes in sharing the burden to help all citizens as though we were all one family. Jesus could be described as a Democrat. He believed in helping the poor, healing the sick, and giving aid to the elderly at his expense, and respected those who did the same. Many Republicans have explained that they are not against giving to those in need, but have argued that it's more noble to give voluntarily instead of everyone being forced to give by the government. However, I can't help but to believe they conveniently hide behind this logic because statistics have shown that the more money one has, the less percentage they tend to give, and that people simply do not donate enough. During the Great Depression of the 1930s, President Herbert Hoover tried a program called volunteerism, but it failed miserably. 
there simply weren't enough Dudley Do-Rights or Mother Teresas in the world to make it work. It's also extremely embarrassing to seek charity and could leave a needy citizen to be branded for life. Now, as far as the Republicans are concerned, this humiliation helps to serve as a great disincentive to ever rely too strongly on charity, as well as a lesson not to ever fall financially behind. But this pressure can too often be too much, and frequently leads to domestic abuse, theft, murder, or suicide. Public aid is genuinely needed at times, and the recipients are often not to blame. What would be most charitable and noble is for us to all agree now to permanently volunteer to aid those who are truly in need. There are other important differences, like how Democrats usually seem to show more concern for the health of our environment than Republicans do. For example, Democrats tend to believe global warming is a real threat primarily caused by man's overproduction of carbon emissions, while Republicans tend to believe man-made global warming is just a myth, or at least turn a blind eye to protect special interest groups. Republicans usually make a lot more money and are said to cater to the wealthy upper class while ignoring the minorities. Democrats are usually not as financially well off and are said to cater to the middle class, the poor, the impaired, and the elderly. The Republican Party is often viewed as racist and sexist, which of course does not include all Republicans, and the Democratic Party is known to support all kinds, regardless of race, age, or sexual preference. Republicans are usually more ego-driven, whereas Democrats are usually more humbled and passive. In fact, the further to the right one is, politically, the more self-centered, selfish, and stingy one tends to be, like an immature child who hates to share. The further to the left of the political spectrum, the more laid back, tolerant, and giving one usually is, even to a fault. Therefore, far right-winged Republicans are often viewed as heartless, intolerant, and uncaring and far left-wing Democrats are often viewed as gullible, naive, and overprotective. To continue the comparison, Democrats usually root for gun control, while Republicans usually fight for the right to bear arms. Republicans are usually pro-life, and Democrats are usually pro-choice. The list, of course, goes on. Aside from the more important distinctions, there are some more trivial but still interesting personality traits that seem to be shared by members of each party. For instance, Republicans are more likely to watch Fox News, American Idol, and Survivor, whereas Democrats are more likely to watch MSNBC News, The Simpsons, and Star Trek. Republicans tend to prefer Leno, and Democrats tend to prefer Conan. It's not always the case, but if you live in the South, or the Midwest, or love country western music, or really love to hunt, or believe the Apollo moon landings were faked, then you are very likely a Republican. Again, it's not written in stone, but if you live up north, or live in a big city, or love New Age music, or believe in extraterrestrials, then there is a really good chance that you are a Democrat. Remember, though, there are no guarantees. It's possible to run across a Republican who can't stand the sight of blood, and you can find a Democrat who loves to wear cowboy boots and lives on a farm. But to get back to the main difference between the two parties, Republicans seek economic freedom, and Democrats seek social freedom. In my opinion, both forms of freedom are good, as long as they are not in the extreme. There is such a thing as too much freedom. When there is too much freedom, then people are free to unjustly take from others, free to take advantage and manipulate others for their own selfish needs, and free to behave any way they want, even if it annoys others. True freedom is the freedom to walk down our neighborhoods without fear of being attacked or mugged. True freedom is the freedom to have a decent job and the freedom to learn and the freedom to save money. Ironically, we have to have fences in order to have true freedom. Currently, we are in an economic crisis, a problem caused by both Republicans with their desire for less economic regulations and Democrats with their endless wasteful spending. So I strongly recommend to all Republicans and to all Democrats, become a moderate or a centrist. Move towards the center of the overall political spectrum if we can all find a middle ground and a healthy balance between rules and freedoms, I believe our nation will prosper in every way. I believe mankind will finally live the way man was intended to live, in balanced comfort with true freedom.